Where do we even begin? I mean, the third episode of Warzone was just, I mean, wow. One thing after the other. In spite of how crazy things got, the main event made up for it as Stone Cold Steve Austin went one-on-one with Bret the Hitman Hart. Now let's face it, we all knew that match was going to be dope, but being that it was Austin's return to in-ring competition, you had to know he was going to be bringing a little extra in with him. And what about Bret Hart? He's been on the receiving end of unsolicited attacks from Austin ever since I can remember. This would be his chance to set it right. We'll watch that entire match later on in this broadcast, but first, let's talk about what went down earlier in the night. We'll begin with The Undertaker. If you've been following, you know that some strange, almost supernatural things have been going on around him that he seems totally confused by. In the midst of all this is his rivalry with The Rock, who laid down a challenge on the last war zone. This time, Undertaker was ready to respond. Well, listen to this, Rock. I want you to get your TV writers that write all your comedy stick for you and get them to write you a eulogy. Your mouth has wrote a check your can't cash. Some strong words by the dead man. So now, you keep talking and you keep entertaining, but let's see when it's all on the line what you really got. I know, it ain't much. It's going to be Undertaker and The Rock, one-on-one on pay-per-view. But back to the here and now, as you all might recall, Intercontinental Champion Shawn Michaels returned to the war zone as well after a brief medical hiatus. And while he isn't cleared to compete, he was definitely not going to let that stop him from getting the attention of all the JWF fans. All right, if I could have your attention. As you all know, our next pay-per-view event is coming up soon. With Shawn Michaels hurt for the time being, this gives us the opportunity to crown the number one contender for the prestigious Intercontinental Championship. And what we've come up with is this. Chris, Brett, it was the two of you in a tag team in our main event at one night only. And since you gentlemen won the match, the upper management's decided that at our next pay-per-view, you will both be offered the chance to become the number one contender. It's going to be the two of you in a singles match with the victor guaranteed an intercontinental title shot at the following pay-per-view against Shawn Michaels, provided he's still the champion at that point, and provided he's still got his smile. What? Oh, come on, that's fun. I have full confidence that this match will be a great display of both of your abilities. At this time, I'd like to wish you both the very best of luck. Shawn Michaels' actions definitely caught the attention of everyone in that arena. Were these self-preservation measures since he knew he'd eventually be facing one of these two athletes? Or were they the actions of a jealous, insecure competitor who now feels like his championship is being threatened? Time will tell. And speaking of time, it's time to announce to our fans that the upcoming JWF pay-per-view is going to be called Collision. And we're definitely going to be offering more information on that as time goes on. Now before people start getting upset, rest assured that our legal team has consulted with the representatives over at CCW and we've come to an agreement over the terms of using the name Collision for a wrestling show. So, arrangements are made, details are getting ironed out, and this show is going to be coming together soon. Now it's time everyone, let's watch the main event, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Brett the Hitman Hart, two of our sport's most recognizable and very best athletes going head to head. Let's have a look. I've been waiting a long time for this one, ladies and gentlemen, as Stone Cold Steve Austin looks like he's offering up a test of strength against Bret Hart to start this one off. And Austin letting Bret know exactly what he thinks of him. And Bret Hart obviously weary to get back into that test of strength, but it looks like he finally accepts, and these two are going at it. Austin brings him down to the mat, but Bret Hart manages to get the leverage and toss him over his head. And now Bret Hart looks like he's planning his attack. I think he's going right for Steve Austin's leg. He's got that leg braced up, it's in pretty bad shape, and the hitman knows it. And Stone Cold is not in good shape right now. Bret Hart obviously thinking about some high-impact offense as he ascends to the second rope. But no, Austin had it scouted. Bret Hart should have known better than to try that this early in the match. But now it's Austin, still favoring that leg. But he's back in control as he sends Bret Hart off the ropes and straight to the outside. Steve Austin in control, and the Hitman on the floor. Now Austin drops a double axe handle on the back of the Hitman, and the referee starts counting. But Stone Cold isn't done yet, as he looks like he's setting up here. And there's Bret Hart's head right into the steel post. Steve Austin very aggressive here tonight, as he sends the Hitman right back into the ring. But Bret Hart hits a quick kick, and a swinging neckbreaker, bringing Austin back to the ground. Now there's a standing leg drop, and a cover, but only two. 
Austin can't afford to turn his back on Bret Hart for long as Bret Hart continues the offense. And he's continuing to wear down that knee of Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know in the back of his head, he's thinking about the sharpshooter. Bret Hart just continues the assault. More damage to the knee, and there you see Chris Jericho backstage watching this match. He knows he's got to go one-on-one -on -one with the Hitman soon, as Austin kicks out of an attempted figure four, but Bret Hart right back on top of him with a sleeper hold. Thus far, this is looking like it's been Bret Hart's match, as he puts Stone Cold Steve Austin down and under with a sleeper hold. Austin showing little signs of life, but the Hitman is relentless. He is not letting go of that hold. But the Rattlesnake is fighting back, and he's back on his feet, and he sends Bret Hart off the ropes and right into a stun gun. Drop the Hitman throat first across the top rope, and now Stone Cold Steve Austin has to get himself back in control of this match. Oh, God, I don't know if that was a low blow or not, but he can't get himself disqualified here. Bret Hart's in some trouble here as Austin lands an elbow from the second rope. But Austin only gets two out of it as the Hitman still kicks out. Stone Cold still showing that he's got a bad knee there, but that's not going to stop him from running across the ring and choking Bret Hart across the ropes. The referee begins counting, but Austin now comes off the ropes and, and drops that big leg across the throat of the Hitman. And what's this crap? Oh, for the love of God. Why is Shawn Michaels out here? He has no reason to be out here, and after what he did earlier tonight, he's lucky he's even still allowed in the building. But Austin continues his assault and stopping him on holding him and walking it dry. Austin keeping an eye on Michaels on the stage to make sure he doesn't get attacked. And Austin looking for the stunner there, but the Hitman was able to counter and spin out of that. And now Bret Hart sets him up. Huge pile driver. Both men down, and Austin really needs to regroup. Bret Hart needs to regain control of this matchup. And Shawn Michaels just needs to get the hell off of the stage, because looking at him is infuriating. The Hitman now coming back with some offense. And now he suplexes Austin down to the mat and makes a quick cover. It only gets two out of it. Bret Hart now targeting the body of Austin as, well, Jericho was back there watching, but I don't know where he went. But Bret Hart continues the assault and sets him up, a side rushing leg sweep, and now Bret Hart has spotted Shawn Michaels. The dialogue between these two has to be most foul as the hitman got attacked from behind earlier tonight by Shawn Michaels. And if he doesn't watch out, he's gonna get attacked from behind again by Steve Austin. And there's a punch in the face. Austin sends him off the ropes and directly into a Lufez press. Stone Cold is on fire as he drops that elbow right to the head of the Hitman. And now Steve Austin calling for the end here. Bret Hart dazed. And wait a minute, there's Jericho. Jericho and Michaels on the stage. Austin attempts a stunner, but Bret Hart with a counter. And Steve Austin is locked in the sharpshooter. Stone Cold in a world of pain after all the damage done by Bret Hart to his knees and back. And Jericho and Michaels on the outside still fighting. And the referee's trying to break the two of them up rather than paying attention to the match in the ring. And Bret Hart is livid. The Hitman thought he had this match won and Shawn Michaels on the outside. Bret Hart goes back after. No, there's an elbow. And there's the stunner. The Stone Cold stunner. Two, three. Austin just got the cover on Bret Hart. Michaels and Jericho still... Wait a minute. The, the CM Punk. What is CM Punk doing attacking Austin? Bret Hart now setting his sights on Shawn Michaels as Austin is laying in the ring, getting mauled by CM Punk. Folks, this is absolute carnage. I have no idea what's going on. As the broadcast ended, we were seeing a display of chaos that I'm not sure I've ever seen here in JWF. Chris Jericho and Bret Hart were all bent out of shape because of that attack by Shawn Michaels earlier, but what was going on with CM Punk? Attacking Steve Austin is definitely a way to get yourself noticed, but I can't imagine it's going to end well for him once the rattlesnake decides it's time for his revenge. That's it for this episode of Warzone, people. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.